Hello everyone and welcome back to my flight career series where I go between different flight sim games in an attempt to log flights in as many planes as possible while learning to fly them properly. This time we are in flight sim 10 and we are going to be doing the instrument pilot training with instructor Rod Machado. I previously did the student pilot and private pilot bits and those were actually the first episodes in the series but we're going to move on to instrument pilot so Finally, you guys won't have to hear about me bemoaning the fact that I have to go with VFR flight rules. Uh, so I'll, I'll get this training. Uh, a sole flight on scanning instruments. I think I'll just go straight into the VOR approach. Um, I, in fact, have downloaded the, the charts for the various air, airports that I'm going to be flying at um, for, for the time being. We're going to expand eventually and I'll just download those as well. Uh, thankfully they're available for free off of the FAA website so that's nice. And so I'll just review this and then we'll begin the flight. Okay so here's the VOR approach lesson. Estimated time to complete 25 minutes and the chart looks like this for PAE it looks like there we're going for and I'm sure there will be guidance from my instructor about the details. We'll start in the air and fly the VOR approach into Snohomish County Airport, Payne Field. Intercept the VOR course, track the course, fly a course reversal maneuver, fly the approach while descending to a minimum descent altitude, and land on runway 16R. And so we can see sort of 2,000 feet there descending down to that pretty simple. It looks like the minimum descent altitude is 1,060 feet uh, for my class of plane anyway. Uh, for a heavier craft it's a little bit higher. In this lesson we'll fly a full VOR approach with a procedure turn. Before we begin, you'll need to refer to the Everett Washington VOR approach plate to see how we'll fly this instrument approach. You must also make sure to read the ground school session on instrument approaches, otherwise your brain is sure to be rattled with terms and concepts you haven't yet heard. On the upper left hand side of the instrument panel, next to the airspeed indicator, you'll find your next best friend, and that's called the clock. The clock. When you found it, yep. click the select button. This calls up the stopwatch function. Most Ooh. holding patterns are stopwatch. based on time, so a good stopwatch is essential. Clicking the control button starts the stopwatch. It counts up in seconds, minutes, and hours. Clicking it again stops it, and the third time will reset it back to zero so it's ready to be used again. Okay. You're going to be very busy during an instrument approach, so it's important to have as much done as possible as early as possible. Long before I get this close to the airport, I've checked the ATIS, fished out the correct approach chart, verified that it's the correct approach chart, stowed the coffee jug, tuned and verified the radios, and mentally reviewed the entire approach. ATC has just cleared us for the VOR Bravo approach, and we're to maintain 3,000 feet until crossing Payne VOR. Turn right more. Oh, wow. We got there. knocked off. The VOR needle shows that we've crossed the station. Turn left now to a heading of 340 degrees, and fly to the point where we'll begin the bob portion of the procedure turn. Okay, turning three four zero. Turn slightly to intercept and track the three four zero degree course outbound and mark the time. Mark the time. Okay. Okay, it's gonna tell me I'm too high too. Oh, the text is going pink now. You're too high. Descend. And that's not good either. You're too high. Descend. There is some wind to deal with here. Now I did end up getting the Realism Expansion Pack for the Cessna 172 for X-Plane 11, but that's not operant in here right now. We'll see what that's all about in x 11 in a different episode. Technically my Cessna is still sitting down south in uh, in Hayward. This is the trainer Cessna 172. Different serial number. 
I am trying to track where my planes are and make sure that we're consistent about that. Since that's not going well, I'm going to end this lesson. I'm now. not entirely I sure what I did wrong there. We're at 3,000 so we in line with the VOR. Piloting skills some more. But apparently he thought that I did something wrong, so... Well, I'll have to try it again. I was a little bit distracted, I guess, but... Okay, based on a chart, I think uh, the instructor was expecting me to descend to 2,000, though he had not said so. We'll see. Okay, roll out. And we need to start descending to 2,000 anyway, so let's just make sure we start that. I assume it's the right time to do that. Turn slightly to intercept and track the 340 degree course outbound and mark the time. Mark the time. Got it. Now let me see if descending is okay. You're too low. Okay, nope, does not want me to descend, actually. I don't want to get too many red marks, otherwise I'm going to have to do it again. Hope I'm going to get some sort of indication of when exactly to start descending, then. The one minute timer was for when we get to 295. And we stay on 295, too far to the left. I am. I'm surprised. Let's focus. We are a little bit too far to the left. Now okay. is also a good time to begin your descent Let's to 2,000 feet descent. and reduce your speed to 90 knots. I am too far to the Don't right. Don't worry about descending at a specific rate. Just get the power back to about 1,600 RPM and adjust 1600. your pitch to maintain 90 knots. There. The DMA oh. reads six miles, so let's begin the barred portion of this procedure turn by turning left to a heading of 295 degrees and fly outbound for one minute. When you roll outbound on a heading okay. of 295 degrees, let's mark the time. Mark the time. Okay, we are... Speed up. Okay, we need to speed up. He didn't tell me to change the... the OBS. Well, that's We've one been minute. outbound for one minute, so let's turn right to a heading of 115 degrees to intercept the 160 degree course Turning inbound to right. the VOR. Okay, we're at Since 115. Since you're now going OBS to 160 degrees. Okay, so 160. Set OBS 1. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. There we go. Okay, we're intercepting the 160 degree course inbound, so turn to a heading of 160 degrees. Intercept and fly that course inbound. Begin a descent to 1,060 feet. This is our minimum descent altitude, or MDA. Maintain an approach speed of 90 knots. I know from the airport diagram that the VOR is east of runway 16 right, so we'll be looking mostly to our right for the approach lights. Make small corrections to maintain altitude and to keep the VOR-1 vertical needle centered. Don't go below 1,060 feet until the runway is in sight. If we can't see the runway by the time we get to the VOR, then we'll execute the missed approach. Okay, we're on track. Descending to 1,060 feet. But we have to stay above that. At 90 knots here. Okay, 90 knots still descending. Hopefully we're not too close. We're 3 nautical miles away. 3.7. And I see the runway. I think I see the runway at about 1 o'clock. Yep, so do I. Alright. Well, I see the pappy lights anyway. But I guess I should maintain 1,060 until he tells me to land, huh? Yes, I have the runway at 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock? It uh, looks like 12 o'clock to me, but okay, whatever. I hope that's the right runway that I'm looking at. So I guess we land, yeah? Or no? Hmm.
Okay, we're clear to land. Checklist is complete. We're cleared to land on runway one six right, Captain. Be sure to stay on the poppy's glide slope. Yep, and flaps. Looking good on the Pappy's glide slope. And more flaps. Okay, a little bit too high. Okay, that's good. Too high. Always just a bit nervous about the trees. Okay, uh, that was pretty good on the glide slope. And we're down. So that's a VOR approach, and I think I'm okay on that. Slow down. I know, I know I'm slow. As a good educational aid, why don't you check out the flight analysis while I go park the airplane? Okay, so I did the solo flight, and now we move on to the ILS approach. Um, yep, and ILS approach consists of a descent to a runway using both vertical and horizontal electronic guidance. And we've got the two needles, and takes you down to a height known as decision height. TH, approximately 200 feet above the runway elevation. Exciting! For a typical ILS approach flown at 90 knot, a 500 foot per minute descent rate is required to maintain, to remain on the glide slope. So, and then if we go faster, we increase the descent rate. I'll try and just hit that. 500 feet per minute at 90 knots, hopefully. Um, Reduce power from its present setting to 1600 RPM. And then we will adjust. And of course, that'll be different for each plane. It's just this says no 172. And here's a little chart uh, for rate of descent, ground speed versus angle of descent. In this lesson, we'll fly an ILS approach to runway 13 right at Boeing Field in Seattle, Washington. I have tuned and identified the IBFI ILS and the NOLA locator outer marker. We're about eight nautical miles northwest of Boeing Field. We're flying east on a heading of 085 degrees at 2,200 feet. We'll need to intercept the ILS and then make our approach. Watch the VOR1 indicator. This is our ILS display. As an ILS instrument, it uses both the vertical needle and the horizontal needle. The vertical needle represents the localizer, and the horizontal needle represents the glide slope. Let's start our approach to intercept the ILS. We'll make our approach to runway 13 right by following the ILS. The inbound course for the ILS is 130 degrees. Okay, you've got the airplane. I'll work the radios, you do the flying. All right, well... I don't know what I need to do right now except for keep it going. Now we're close to intercepting the localizer. As the localizer needle starts to move, begin a right turn to intercept. Remember that the inbound course is 130 degrees. Alright. Seems easier than the VOR approach. Let's see. I show the localizer needle is active. Turn yep. right to intercept. It, Remember it, that a localizer is much more sensitive than a VOR course, so we'll have to be much more diligent in tracking it. Oh, great. Well, that's tougher. Okay, a bit fidgety, but all right. Uh, keep going up, please. And we need 90 knots. You're too low. Climb. Yep. So we need more power. And I need to be further right. 
speed up. Okay, feel like I'm making a hash of this. Turn right more. You're too low. Climb. Okay. Hopefully we're not too bad off. It looks like it's centering. Oops, I need to go to the right. Turn left more. You're too low. Climb. So many things. There's Nola, the locator out of marker. Listen for the sound and notice the blinking blue light. This tells you you're at Nola. We're now at 6.4 miles from the runway threshold. Turn right more. You're now on the glide slope. Start your descent for landing. Okay. The approach chart says we should be at 2,117 feet at the marker with the glide slope needle centered. This is an extra check to make sure our altimeter is indicating correctly. Remember to make small corrections on the localizer and glide slope. They're very sensitive. If the glide slope needle moves toward the top of the VOR1 indicator, you're too low. Reduce your descent rate. Turn left more. Don't try to climb back to the glide slope. Just level off and wait for it to come back to you. You're too high. Reduce power. If the glide slope needle moves toward the bottom of the VOR1 indicator, it's tough because he's talking high. over himself. Increase your descent rate. The approach chart says that we should have a descent rate of approximately 500 feet per minute to remain on the glide slope. Focus on maintaining a constant descent rate and be careful not to chase the glide slope needle. Decision altitude for this approach is 263 feet, but for convenience, we'll use 300 feet. Turn right more. If we get to 300 feet without seeing the runway, we'll immediately execute a missed approach. Okay, reacquiring the glide slope here. Turn right more. Shh, man. Doubly annoying to have him harp about it. Raise your flaps. Oh, he doesn't want Speed flaps. Up. Okay. Yep, pretty good right now. Trying to go get uh, 500 feet per minute. A little bit to the left. Okay, well, I see the runway. So decision decision wise we're okay. I really would like to get my flaps out now. Just saying. Speed up. Well, okay, he wants me to speed up. We're approaching You're the too runway. Low. Increase power. We're like at the runway and he wants me to speed up it's not right you're too high reduce power uh... was I not supposed to go for right was it supposed to be left well, of course I'm too high he told me to increase power can't decide what Raise he wants flash. me to do speed up forget it I'm gonna land Maybe I was supposed to go for 13 left. I wonder what he's going to say about it. Speed up. Raise your flaps. Oh, he's not accepting this. Okay, well, I did the solo flight uh, for the ILS approach and did it reasonably well. I landed on the specified runway. Uh, there was no guidance for that, so I'll just uh, leave that be for now. And uh, we'll uh, double check it on the instrument reading check ride. But first, we've got this holding patterns one. And I guess I'll take that lesson first. I don't anticipate uh, holding patterns being especially difficult, but... Let's find out. 20 minutes to complete. No charts are needed. And there's a GPS unit option. Start this flight in the air at 4,000 feet. Enter a holding pattern. Complete the circuit. And practice as long as you like. Bank within 10 degrees of a standard rate turn. Okay. Let's see. I know you've dutifully studied your homework lesson, so you know how to make a direct entry into the holding pattern. Sure I did. Okay, you've got the airplane. 
As soon as we passed over the VOR, begin a standard rate turn to the right. Turn to a heading of 180 degrees for the outbound leg, which is also called the holding side. There, we passed the station. Okay, begin turning right. Begin a right turn to a heading of 180. Use a standard rate turn as shown on the turn coordinator. The outbound leg should last one minute from the time you roll out on a heading of 180 degrees. Okay, so we need As you roll out on a, a heading timer. of 180 degrees, start the time. This is the start of the holding pattern's outbound leg. Oh, we're going too high. We'll fly outbound for one minute on a heading of 180 degrees. Okay, start it's the timer. It's important to maintain our altitude while we are holding, unless ATC oh, tells high. us otherwise. Air traffic control promises us that there aren't any more airplanes in our racetrack, but there very well may be airplanes in their own racetracks above and below us. Okay, 100 knots, 4,000 feet, maybe a little bit more trim there, and 180 degrees. Looking good. And that's been a minute. So I'm just waiting for him to tell me something, otherwise he's going to be angry. Okay, the outbound time has elapsed. Okay, turning we'll right. back to the VOR station on the inbound leg. Start a standard rate turn to the right to intercept the 180 degree radial or the 360 degree course inbound. Then track that course inbound to the station. As the needle moves toward the center, adjust your turn rate. You'll want to center the needle as you roll out on a heading of 360 degrees. This is a bit tricky, but you can do it. Remember that the VOR indicator becomes more sensitive as we get closer to the station, so we'll need to get stabilized on the inbound radial as soon as possible. Okay, don't go too high. Turn right more. Now we're back and on the that. inbound leg of the holding pattern. By definition, this leg should take us one minute before we reach the VOR station. Watch for the to from indicator on VOR1 to flip, indicating that you've passed the station. Once we pass the station, we'll turn south again and fly the outbound leg once more. There, we've passed the station, completing one loop of the pattern. Now once again, turn right to a heading of 180 degrees for the outbound leg. Use a standard rate turn as shown on the turn coordinator. Typically, you'd remain in the holding pattern until air traffic control gives you a clearance to continue on your route. We can use the GPS system to help monitor our pattern. Hold down the shift key and the three key to call up the GPS. You should see a nice oval racetrack with parallel sides. Don't leave it up too long though, because it gets in the way of the nav instruments. Indeed, it does get in the way. Bank the wings more. Bank the wings more. Uh, we're at 180. Fly a couple more laps around the holding pattern and press escape when you're ready to move on to the next lesson. I think I'm Look ready at the flight to. Analysis to help judge your performance. Ideally, you should see a bunch of lines on top of each other in a nice oval, as well as a straight line on the altitude plot. Okay, we are going to move on to the instrument rating check ride. Okay, so this is going to be a bit complicated. Uh, 45 minutes, two charts. We've got uh, this one of Seattle International, and then the second one is Boeing Field, which we're more familiar with. So far, they haven't had me do anything with Seattle International. Um, check ride, test the skills learned, um, assess your ability to perform a non-precision VOR approach to a missed approach, hold at a VOR, perform a procedure, a procedure turn, and complete an ILS approach. Expect you to set the nav and ADF radios to the appropriate frequencies, so I should probably jot those down. And we must also manually set the OBS. Okay, and this is an interesting chart we've got here. So we've got the overall criteria, very tight course requirements, plus or minus two degrees. Set up for VOR approach, uh, nav one radio within 30 seconds. Uh, uh, correct frequency, maintain 66 degrees. I should probably jot everything down. Hello, I'm your examiner for today's instrument rating check ride. In this check ride, I won't ask you to do anything illegal or dangerous. I will expect you to fly in a professional manner. 
I'll expect you to tune your own radios, maintain all altitudes and other assignments I might give you. You will not be able to use the autopilot during this flight. Feel free to use the pause button if you need more time to set up the radios or get prepared for the flight. No, no, that'd be cheating. When you're ready, just resume the flight. Since this is a simulator, we're starting in the air at 5,000 feet. I want you to tune the NAV-1 radio to the Seattle VOR 116.8. I uh, she jotted down the frequencies, but nice that she told me. Oh, uh, that's 115. This is a bit of a glare. Okay. Your clearance is direct to the fax intersection, then cleared for the VOR approach, runway 34 right at Seattle Tacoma International Airport. For the purposes of this check ride, we'll assume that the weather has been checked and that the weather is above minimums for this approach. I'll give you further clearances as we go, but I will not give you instructions. You are the pilot in command for this check ride. Yay. I'm disabling the autopilot now. Okay. Cleared for VOR approach to Seattle Tacoma International. So we're just maintaining this heading, uh, what? Maintaining that heading, 6-6. Six, six. Uh, we seem to be knocked a little bit to the left here. Uh, until we cross the fax marker and then we'll be turning towards the... I'm sorry, you're gonna have oh. to take that check right again. Wow, check that was quick. Check analysis to see where you need improvement. You did not set the NAV-1 OBS to the correct inbound course. Oh, okay, okay. I see. Alright. Well, that was quick. Yeah, I have to set that. Obviously, that would make sense. <laughs> okay, let's do this again. I want you to tune the NAV-1 radio to the Seattle VOR, 116.8. Okay. 116. Oh, nope. Alright. And we need to tune the course. Your clearance is direct to the fax intersection, then cleared for the VOR approach, runway 34 right at Seattle Tacoma International Airport. For the purposes of this check ride, we'll assume that the weather has been checked and that the weather is above minimums for this approach. I'll give you further clearances as we go, but I will not give you instructions. You are the pilot in command for this check ride. All right. I'm disabling the autopilot now. As long as we stay above 3,000, we should be fine. And it said we have to get to the intersection above 3,000 feet, so. So 3,000 feet would be good. Oh, no, she wants us at 5,000. Okay. My mistake. I took a look at the notes. It didn't say that we should maintain 5,000 here, but okay. All right. Back to a satisfied experience. Well, most of the time this is going to take is simply the route into the missed approach. Well, we've verified early on that a failure can happen and that the examiner is not going to tell me everything. We are getting to the point where I should be descending. I'm going to test descend right now. And see if she tells me to go back to 5,000 feet now. Do they let me, well, they do let me take a look at the GPS. Okay, it's, she's telling me to descend to 1,600 feet, so we're good. I'm already trying to do that. Yep, oh, I'm a little bit off track now. Yep, I'm too far to the left. I agree. And now she also wants me to maintain the heading, but it's tough to correct the fact that I'm too far to the left and maintain the heading, so. There we go. Only 1.4 nautical miles. I'm definitely way too high. But VOR approach, we're going to maintain that 1,600 anyway. 
Oh, way off, way off, way off. Oh, there's there's the airport. But we, we're gonna do a missed approach here, definitely. That's going to happen. Okay, we need to maintain heading out. Go around, go around. Yep. Execute the published missed approach. Published missed approach time. Definitely. So climb to 1,000, uh, sorry, 2,100 it is. Well, I can't say I'm doing great here, but at least uh, she hasn't tossed me out yet. Okay, so we're supposed to get to park. Can't even see the little dots on the map there. Okay, park is over there, alright. Uh, so we're relatively okay. I'm sorry, you're gonna have oh. to take that check ride again. Check the flight analysis to see where you need improvement. You did not stay within 10 knots of your assigned speed. Oh! You did not stay within 10 degrees of your assigned heading. You did not maintain 5,000 feet to facts. You did not intercept and hold the 338 course inbound. You crossed milk below 3,000 feet. You crossed the outer marker below 1,600 feet. You crossed the Seattle VOR below 840 feet. I never feet. got below 840 you did not climb feet. On the missed approach. But I wasn't doing a particularly good job, though. Well, I guess I'll have to redo it again. Go around, go around. Execute okay. the published missed approach. Going around. Okay, we are correct on the missed approach heading, and we need to descend and maintain 2100 according to the charts ascend and maintain technically because we were lower than it but we're now higher than it we overshot okay we're on track we gotta be within 100 feet of the assigned altitude and we are at the correct speed I'm sorry, you're gonna have to take that check right again. I don't know. Check the flight analysis to see where you need improvement. I don't know. You did know. not stay within 10 knots of your assigned speed. You did not stay within 10 degrees of your assigned heading. You did not maintain 5,000 feet. I did feet maintain 5,000 feet to not intercept and hold the It just lists all inbound. the things that could go wrong. You crossed milk below 3,000 feet. I definitely you did not. Crossed the outer marker below 1,600 feet. I did not you cross the, the outer, outer marker below, below 1,600 feet. feet. You did not climb on the So it just approach. lists all the possible things that could go wrong. Degree course. So that's not nice. I don't know if it's bugged or not. I don't know how many things I could get wrong. I thought I was doing pretty well. But I'll try it one more time. If if it doesn't work, I'm just going to assume that this particular one is always going to fail at that point cuz um I've certainly done much worse on the pre uh, other other check ride. I mean, heck, on the on the private pilot's license one, I like totally missed the runway. So, but um, we'll see. Let me try one more time. Okay. Well, I checked online, and it turns out there is a bit of a problem with this check ride. So yeah, uh, apparently I need to try to go a heading of 341 instead of 339, but then she might get irritated by that, but it's close enough that it should work out. Uh, the problem is we're not flying over the correct intersection point, the park intersection point, and um, that's because the listed heading is incorrect, apparently. We'll see. And of course, if you get it wrong, apparently it just lists everything that could have gone wrong instead of specifically what you got wrong. I see that ODD marker, and we should be above 1,600 feet when we cross that, it says. So, we actually have quite a bit of descending to do. Got a pre align the OBS for what I think is the actual outbound trajectory which is more like 341 and we're going to turn more towards that than what we've been doing okay descending to 1600 now 
Though technically I think we should be at 1600 at this ODD marker, but uh, the examiner wants it this way, so let's not complicate things. We always end up very, very high over the runway, I notice. Let's just make sure we're on track. I want to adjust the heading knob a little bit because we know we're going to be a little bit different. Go around, go around. Execute the published missed approach. Okay, published missed approach time. Okay, let's hope we actually hit the marker that we're supposed to this time. You can see it's very much more like 340 something than 330 something. No, no, park is up front. I see it now. Not fax, park. So we can see there, it's very much to our right, which is not what was initially advertised. So let's just try and hit it, regardless of what she says about the heading because otherwise we're going to fail anyway. I'm sorry, you're going to oh. have to take that check right again. Check the flight or analysis not. to see where you need improvement. You crossed the Seattle VOR below 840 feet. You did not climb on the missed approach. You did not maintain the 339 degree course. I mean, I can't argue with the 339 course bit, but I certainly didn't maintain that very well, but um, I think there's another systematic problem with uh, the 339 approach uh, not being in line with park at all and I think that's well anyway uh, let me look a little bit more online and see if there's some other problem with this but uh, yeah let me let me check if uh, there are some other hints okay one more time with special attention to everything everything must be good okay very few yellow marks for me and there's the point where we we need to start descending so I'm gonna start decelerating and getting ready to go on descent So at ODD, we should be heading to 1,600 feet. And I think we need to throttle down a bit there. I don't know if I should just start heading down now. I think it's all right, but you know. Okay. And before we cross the VOR, I'm going to slightly adjust I can actually see the runway, but whatever. Let's prepare for the missed approach. Okay, missed approach. Go around, go around. Execute the published missed approach. Now again, I believe I want to make sure I hit that one marker. Park, P A R K K. And for that, we need to go a little bit to the right of what's advertised without annoying the examiner. Delicate balance. And we'll see what happens. That's pretty darn close right there. Oh, but I need to make sure not to go past the heading limits. Uh, don't do that, don't do that. I'm sorry, Aww. you're going to have to take that check right again. Check the flight analysis to see where you need improvement. You did not stay within 10 knots of okay, your Okay, okay, uh, no, I can't, I can't hear it anymore. Alright, yeah, well, that was more difficult than I thought it was going to be. So, yeah. 
I don't know what to make of this instrument rating check ride. It uh, always fails at that point when we're reaching P-A-R-K-K. -K. It seems people do have a problem with that part. Um, yeah, I think I should probably move on temporarily. And maybe we'll come back to it. Uh, maybe there is some other way to <laughs> verify my instrument rating. We'll see. Anyway, uh, so after that mountain of frustration, I think I'll leave it here. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.